Many things remain beyond human understanding. When certain events cannot be explained with science or logic, the stories begin to inspire fear in everyone. This is how myths and legends are created. It's especially true in small villages where rumors spread very quickly, and people tend to exaggerate to be more entertaining. The story we are going to tell you today is amazing and unusual. It tells about how human fear can change reality. Get comfortable as we get started. This story took place in the Far East, in a small remote village located on the outskirts of the Tiger Forest. One early January morning, a local resident went outside to inspect the surroundings and was dumbfounded with terror. In the freshly fallen snow, he saw huge wolf tracks. They came straight from the forest, meandered along the road, and then came and went from a neighboring house. Out of fear, the man ran home, grabbed a gun, called a friend, and together they set off on the trail, hoping to track down the intruder and shoot them. What was the surprise of the two men when the tracks of two wolves entered the same yard of local residents but did not go back? Did that mean the wolves were still inside? The men readied their guns and knocked on the gate. The man who lived in this house came out to them. He listened to his neighbors, but then he said that he had not seen any wolves. The surprised hunters returned home, but they were still concerned. Several days passed, heavy snow fell, and now the whole village was covered with fresh snow. Going out into the street in the morning, the same man again saw fresh wolf tracks that wound throughout the village and again led to the same house where an elderly couple lived. They again denied the presence of wolves and had no idea where these footprints came from. Panic broke out in the village. No one could explain where these footprints came from and what kind of invisible wolves they were that came to the village and did not leave. People began to retell this story to each other, each time adding their own details. Someone even confessed that he saw two werewolves who roamed the village at night. People were afraid to leave the house, children were not allowed to go to school or play outside, and the men organized patrol units and went out every night hoping to catch these unprecedented animals that disturbed the peace. When no activity was detected, the men realized their patrols were likely scaring the animals away, so they decided to hide away throughout different parts of the village. After a few nights of this, everything was finally revealed. Sitting in ambush, one of the men suddenly saw what they were waiting for. From the side of the forest, two huge shadows entered the village, apparently two huge wolves, which slowly walked along their usual route, winding through the yards. They came to the house of an elderly couple and disappeared behind their gates. The men who had been watching them all this time went to the fence and looked inside. What they saw made them freeze in bewilderment. The owner of the house opened the door and let the two huge wolves inside, after which he looked around as if he wanted to make sure that no one saw them, and closed the door behind him. The hunters began banging on the gate and yelling for him to come out immediately and explain what was going on inside his house. Realizing that they could no longer hide the wolves, the elderly couple told the men their story. It turns out that two years ago, while walking in the forest, they found the body of a she-wolf killed by poachers, and near the body lay two pups. At first, the couple thought that the pups were also dead when suddenly they made a barely perceptible sound. Picking them up, the couple realized the pups were still alive, so they decided to bring them home. They could not tell anyone in the village about this because it was against the rules. Wolves were usually exterminated as they were a threat to local residents and their livestock. Therefore, in secret from everyone, they fed the wolf pups in their house and then took them back to the forest. But contrary to their expectations, the wolves did not want to part with their saviors and often came to their house under the cover of night. There, they played and masked until early morning, and then went back to the forest. The elderly couple kept their secret as long as they could, knowing that meeting people would not have good results. Despite their fears, the locals were so touched by this story that they agreed not to kill the tame wolves but let them go back to the forest in peace. After all, they did not harm anyone and even drove other wolves away from the village. When Sarah and James had their first baby, they were concerned about leaving it with their two Dalmatians. After all, the dogs had been their first babies. 
But when they were forced to leave their child with the dogs in an emergency, they were surprised by what they found. Sarah and James' love story was something out of a fairy tale. They were both at the dog park at the same time, and they both had Dalmatians. Dalmatians are a beautiful and highly intelligent dog breed that many people are drawn to for obvious reasons. But they were a rare sight in the couple's city, so when they saw each other's dogs, they couldn't help but engage in a friendly conversation. From the moment they started talking, they realized there was something there. This was the start of a whirlwind romance that they could have never anticipated, and it was all because of their beloved dogs. Sarah had been with her pup, Jem, for over three years, and James had had his big boy, Buddy, for five. The two dogs got on like a house on fire, so much so that sometimes the couple joked about how they believed their dogs were secretly in their own romance. The pair's relationship got increasingly intense until James got down on one knee and proposed. The rest was history. They were so excited to start their lives together. They were in dire search of the right home for their little family when the conditions changed, Sarah found out she was pregnant. It was the dogs that told her first. They kept walking around with Sarah wherever she went, refusing to leave her alone at any time. So when she took the test, and it came back positive, their strange behavior started to make more sense. Naturally, Sarah and James were over the moon at the news. They were so excited at the prospect of being parents to their first baby. But there was something lurking in the back of their minds, how would Jim and Buddy react to the child? The problem with having such a strong relationship with your dogs is that they sometimes end up feeling like they are the center of attention. This attitude can become dangerous when you add to the equation a new focus of attention like a newborn. While Dalmatians are lovely dogs, they too have quite a possessive and protective nature. This was the main concern for the couple, how would the dogs behave? Would they accept the newborn as a new member of the family, or would they feel threatened and disregarded? During the whole pregnancy, Sarah invested a lot of time researching different ways of introducing her new baby to the dogs. They seemed to take quite an interest in her while she was pregnant, and overall she had a positive experience. So deep down, she hoped that their behavior would stay the same after the birth of the baby. The couple decided to invite some friends over who had a child to test out the dog's reactions. It was an interesting experience. The dog seemed intrigued by the baby, but as time wore on and the baby became tired, they too started getting quite irritable. It seemed like they didn't like the noisy disruption the baby was bringing to their usually serene household. This reaction only seemed to make the couple more anxious about the situation. As time passed, they began to fear the possibility that the baby just might not be compatible with the dogs. They would have to put measures in place to avoid any foreseen issues. This started with the preparation of the nursery. They managed to find a beautiful house on an old road. It had three bedrooms, two upstairs and one downstairs. So, they decided to use the room next to theirs for the baby's room. That way, they could keep a close eye on the child. When they moved in, they didn't let the dogs into the room at all. That way, they could learn there was a boundary even before the baby came along. At first, Jim and Buddy were quite confused by the fact that they weren't allowed into the room. This was the first time they couldn't follow their owners somewhere. But being the obedient dogs they were, they would wait patiently outside the door while their humans worked inside. This was just a precaution that the couple felt would be necessary. That way, they could leave the baby in its room, and there would be no concern about how the dogs would behave. Sarah and James also began to ensure that the dogs still got the same amount of attention as usual. They still went on their walks every day and got their puppuccinos at the local cafe every Sunday. The couple was adamant that their first children wouldn't feel neglected because of the incoming baby. One night, Sarah was awakened by a crying gem. She was nudging her and desperately trying to catch her attention. It was at that moment that Sarah realized her bed was wet, her water had broken, and she was already in labor. The pair rushed off to the hospital, leaving their distressed canine friends with a bone to chew in their absence. When they returned, accompanied by an infant, 
it became immediately apparent that the dogs were curious about the new being. They could smell. James had to form a shield to calm them down enough so that they could introduce the baby to them. That itself was a nerve-wracking experience, to say the least. The two dogs fought each other for space to sniff as much of the baby as they could. This resulted in the baby bursting into tears, and Sarah overreacting. She whipped the baby away from the dogs and took him up to the nursery for some privacy. Jim and Buddy were really confused by what was happening. They tried to follow Sarah upstairs, but James called them back. He wanted to give them some love and reassurance, but they weren't stupid. They knew there was a new person in the household, and they desperately wanted to check him out. They needed to know if he was a friend or not. But Sarah was too scared. She really didn't want to regret a bad choice. The last thing she needed was one of the dogs to snap out of irritability. So she did her best to keep the Dalmatians away from the baby, at least until one horrific night. It was closer to midnight. Sarah had just gotten up to feed her son when she heard a horrid crash outside. She called James, and he came running in a panic. They looked out onto the road to see a car that had crashed badly into the side wall across the way. James jumped into action immediately, he knew he needed to help however he could. Sarah, too, felt the need to help, so she put her son back into his crib and rushed downstairs. Without realizing it, they left the nursery door open and inadvertently left the baby alone with Jem and Buddy. But they didn't realize this until it was too late. The pair, along with their neighbors, worked hard to help the passengers of the car get to safety. It was only when Sarah heard her son wailing that she remembered him. It was then that she also realized that the dogs had not followed them outside. Her heart simply sank into her stomach. What had she done? She grabbed James's arm and ran inside. The couple ran upstairs and saw the nursery door wide open. They still hadn't seen the dogs at this point, but the baby had stopped crying. They were really concerned to see what they were going to find. They burst into the room and were met with a sight that simply took their breath away. Jim had his head in the crib and was gently nudging the now consoled baby, while Buddy kept bumping the crib too. When the dogs realized the couple was in the room too, they simply started wagging their tails. They looked at their owners proudly and looked like they were super excited that they had finally got to meet their little brother. They were looking at him protectively and didn't seem disturbed at all by his cry. They knew that this little guy was a part of their family and were determined to look after him the best way they could. Sarah burst into tears and threw herself on her dogs. So much anxiety around this very moment had built up over nine months, but she was pleased to see that everything she had been worried about had come to nothing. After all this time, she should have just trusted her canine babies to look out for the new addition to the family. And now that she knew they loved him just as much as her and James, she would trust them with his life. Why did this girl greet the police? What is the relationship between them? Why is the girl alone again? What happened between them? In this small house, there is a family living in an extremely unfortunate situation. The girl in the family is still very young, and the family has no extra funds to send her to school. Like other girls, the girl also likes to go shopping, but she can't realize this little wish, because the biggest problem in life for her is the problem of food and clothing. There is no one in the family who can cook. The girl spends very little money in convenience stores every day to buy something to fill her stomach. Just once, the girl spilled something while shopping, and a kind policeman passed by to help her pick it up and smiling at him, the girl felt the beauty of the world for the first time. Since then, the girl went to the convenience store to buy food almost every day, and coincidentally, the policeman also went to buy lunch. The place where the guard was stationed was really far away from home, so she had to go to the convenience store to satisfy him food and clothing. Back and forth, the little girl was also very familiar with the police. The police tried to ask about the girl's family situation, wondering why she came out to make a living at such a young age. During the conversation with the girl, he learned that the girl's family is very unfortunate. Her parents are not in good health, 
and her younger brother is too young to contribute to the family. The family depends on her to take care of it. The police told the little girl that in the future, if she has any difficulties, she can come to him, and he will do his best to protect their family. The girl was very moved and shed tears of emotion. On this day, the policeman went to the convenience store to buy lunch as usual. Today he brought the girl a doll as her 10th birthday present. The policeman has been waiting for the girl, but it has been a day and still has not arrived. He asked the clerk if he saw the girl coming in, but none of the clerks saw it. Judging from the police's sensitivity, something must be wrong. The girl might have encountered some difficulties, so he had to go and see. Fortunately, he remembered the home address the girl said, and drove there in a police car. The police knocked on the door and saw that no one came to answer the door for a long time, so he rushed in. As soon as they opened the door, he saw the girl unconscious, and immediately called 120 for an ambulance. In the car, the doctor put glucose on the girl and told the police that it should be is caused by malnutrition. Wait until the hospital to check again. When we arrived at the hospital, the doctor came to the girl's bedside to examine her. She was indeed malnourished as the nurse said. The police went to the convenience store downstairs to buy some food for the girl to eat when she woke up. The police officer asked for half a day off like the captain, and stayed to take care of the girl. After a while, the girl woke up, and the police fed her food. Gradually, her face turned red, and she became less pale. After inquiring that the girl hadn't eaten on time for a long time, and that the food she ate lacked the nutrients her body needed, the police decided to take care of the girl in daily life and promised to protect her and her brother. The girl was very moved, and after a few days of rest, the girl was discharged from the hospital. After a few years, the girl grew up, and with the support of the police, the girl went to school as she wished. On this day, when school was over, the policeman was waiting for the girl to leave school on the road opposite the school. The girl saw the policeman, waved to him, and smiled happily. In life, love can warm everything, as long as everyone has a benevolent heart, all the good things in the world will come as expected, just like the police and the little girl. Why did the old man stand in front of the window and watch? What is he looking at? What is this old man thinking about writing in his heart? There are old people living in this building, so it is called a nursing home. An 84-year-old grandpa is still in good health. From time to time, he goes downstairs to do Tai Chi, while the old women will dance in the square downstairs. The grandfather got acquainted with this 75-year-old Grandma Lin. Coincidentally, this Grandma Lin lived opposite the old grandpa. Sometimes when Grandma Lin was drying clothes, the grandpa would greet her, and the children of the two families gradually became acquainted. The daughter asked her grandpa what he thought of Grandma Lin, and the grandpa said that she was a clean person with good living habits. The daughter joked that he could have more contact with Grandma Lin. Grandpa just smiled. One day, the old man said to his daughter, it's strange. Grandma Lin didn't come out to dry clothes on the balcony recently. It doesn't look like her style. She is usually very clean, and she doesn't even close the curtains when she sleeps at night. It doesn't make sense, why don't you go and see if something happened? After hearing this, the daughter sensed that something was wrong, and asked her grandfather to wait for her at home, and she went to see Grandma Lin. After knocking on the door several times but it didn't open, the daughter called the property to open the door. Sure enough, as soon as she opened the door, she saw that something had happened to Grandma Lin. The daughter immediately called 120 for an ambulance, and the ambulance arrived soon. The daughter called Grandma Lin's family to inform them of the incident, and all the children rushed to the hospital, very worried about Grandma's safety. The daughter asked her younger brother to bring her grandpa to the hospital. He must be very worried about Grandma at this moment. After a long time, the doctor came out and told them that luckily he came in time, otherwise the consequences would be disastrous. Grandma's children were very grateful to Grandpa, if Grandpa hadn't observed carefully, the consequences would have been unimaginable. Grandpa also said that we are all friends, and we should take care of each other. 
After all, this is also a human life. After a long time, the lights in the emergency room went out and the doctor came out. Grandma fell down because of lack of energy. As children, you should pay more attention to the life of the elderly. The sons and daughters nodded after hearing this, feeling very ashamed. After staying in the hospital for a while, Grandma woke up. Everyone was talking about Grandpa's contribution, and Grandma also remembered it in her heart. When she got well, she was going to invite him to dinner. In daily life, neighbors and neighbors must take care of each other, and everyone is in a big group, that is, a part of the family. Only in this way can everyone's quality of life be improved and the relationship will be more harmonious. Why did the milkman stop in front of the old man's house? The milk in the milk carton has not been removed for several days, why? What happened to the old man? The milkman has been working in this place where the elderly live alone for several years, and has received unanimous praise from everyone. From time to time, he chats with the milkman while he is working, which sometimes leads to overtime for the milk delivery. On this day, as usual, the milkman delivered milk to a family. When delivering the fresh milk to an old man who lived alone, he found that the fresh milk in the box had not been taken away in time, and the fresh milk that has been placed for six days has not been taken away, the milkman felt very strange. According to the past, it was delivered on the same day and taken on the same day, and no one would keep it until the next day. The milkman planned to report to the community when the delivery was over, in case something happened to the old man's house, it would be bad. After delivering the milk for a while, the milkman was worried and decided to seek help from the police. After receiving the feedback, the police checked the family situation of the old man and found the daughter's contact number. After dialing the call, the milkman explained the situation to his daughter, and the daughter also explained on the phone that the old man was recently hospitalized due to health reasons, so the milk for the past few days had not been retrieved in time. Only then did the worker feel relieved. After that, the milkman asked for the address of the hospital, wanted to visit the old man, and brought the fresh milk and fruit he had sent. When the old man saw that it was the milkman, he recognized him immediately, and the old man was also very moved that he could miss him so much. Yes, there are a group of people who give silently in life, they are diligent and conscientious, they regard their career as a responsibility, they are loyal to their duties, full of love, do their best, do not ask for anything in return, and hope to help everyone around them, they deserve our respect.